Hi, I'm Wei Lian Deng, co-founder and chief strategy officer at StackRocks. In this video, I'm, I'm going to share seven best practices to secure your Kubernetes clusters. First, upgrade Kubernetes to one of the latest supported versions. This can help you avoid vulnerabilities that impact the Kubernetes API server, kubelet, and other critical components. It also helps you take advantage of the latest security features available in Kubernetes. For example, Kubernetes 119 recently released support for TLS 1.3 and SecComp and general availability. Using a Kubernetes service available from a cloud provider can also help make upgrades easier. Next, secure your container images. There's a bunch of things that you can do here, including using trusted minimal base images, removing any unnecessary tools or components, and scanning your images for vulnerabilities. Security should start with how your images are built to help avoid issues from arising later. Third, use namespaces and nodes to establish security boundaries. Namespaces are important to help appropriately isolate your applications. And it can also be easier to apply different security controls and different levels of permissions when applications are deployed into separate namespaces. You can also choose to uh, run more sensitive applications on dedicated nodes. And you can do this using node pools or Kubernetes features such as taints and tolerations. Fourth, uh, enable role-based access control. And this allows you to determine who or what can access the API server um, and to scope their permissions. Um, in terms of best practices, you want to avoid granting the cluster admin role um, to, um, to certain users or groups. And generally, namespace-specific permissions are better uh, to grant than cluster-wide ones. And if you have applications that need to access the Kubernetes API, you can create individual service accounts and scope their privileges to the smallest set needed. Fifth, you want to um, create and configure network policies. And this allows you to segment and control traffic in between um, to and from your running applications. And to start, you might set a, a default policy, for instance, that blocks traffic between namespaces to avoid you know, all, allowing all pods to talk to each other. Sixth, you want to set pod controls. And you can do this via um, different ways to harden them. You, know, you can use uh, what's known as security context. And these allow you to specify constraints on access and permissions at the level of individual pods that are configured at runtime. Uh, for example, uh, you can say whether a container should run privilege or not, whether its root file system should be mounted as read-only or not, or whether security mechanisms such as SecComp or SE Linux or AppArmor should be leveraged um, or not. Additionally, you can set pod security policies, which set default conditions um, that a pod must meet in order to actually run within your cluster. And together, these controls allow you to enforce finer grained security across all of your pods uh, within your cluster. And then finally, turn on audit logging. And this is important because it allows you to monitor um, you know, API events and look out for anomalous, um, anomalous or unwanted API calls or uh, potentially authorization failures that may be indicative of attacker activity within your cluster. Um, it also provides a basis for you know, additional follow-up or investigation as needed. There you go, seven security best practices to help protect your Kubernetes environments. Uh, to learn more, visit www.stackrocks.com.